Welcome back. I hope you're having a better day than the markets. Markets are red across the board for crypto and the stock markets. So let's take a look at what's going on. And here is Bitcoin with the candy cane pattern. I don't know if you've seen this before, but there's the trend line coming up. And this is the upside down hook or candy cane pattern. This is Bitcoin on the hourly. Let's take a look at the four hour. This is our trend line on the four hour that we've been watching. And on the daily, the major trend line for Bitcoin, which is now it closed below the other uh, over the weekend, popped up yesterday, closed above and now back down. So that was the test that we were looking for for continuation to the downside was to see if price would come back up and bounce or if price would come back below, reject and continue down. So right now, all uh, indications would be that there's going to be more downside in Bitcoin and crypto right now because they're all kind of tied together. A couple of the altcoins are running here and there, but most of them have unwound this entire move, especially the major uh, large cap alts have all kind of followed the same price action uh, as Bitcoin and the major trend that we've been facing. So now we have to look at what's the downside potential and where is price likely to go next. And obviously that trend has been broken. So what we're looking for is the major macro trend of this area here that we've been following all the way across from lows of last summer into the low so far this year. And that's the next major market structure trend line that we're looking for right there. And of course I use the daily closes to track these trend lines. And that's a test of about 38,000. That's the next major test to see if the market's going to hold that trend line. And if that does not hold up, then the potential breakdown is going to be the macro trend all the way across here that we're looking at, which is that twenty nine dollars to $30,000 mark. Again, going on the closes, going all the way back to 2021 right in this area here of January, 2021, low of $30,000. And then of course, going back into the summer of last year, June, July of 2021, same thing, that 29,000. So that's kind of what we're looking at right now. If price, and again, I'm no technical analyst, but this is what I look at in terms of trends, because you want to you want to work with the trend. You don't want to fight the trend. You don't want to fight the Fed. You don't want to fight the market. You don't want to fight the trend. You want to go with it. Right now, the trend is down. So if it breaks this, rejects, then it could work its way back down to this macro trend. And that is going to be the ultimate test of Bitcoin and crypto right there uh, to see if that macro $29,000, $30,000 uh, level is going to hold once price gets there. And this trend line is pretty close. Yeah, we got it pretty close there. Bring it up a, <clears throat> bring it up just a hair. So yeah, so that's what I'm looking at right there in terms of the next possible level for Bitcoin crypto. Uh, if you look at the altcoin market, total three, same kind of thing. You've got these macro lows right here that price is potentially wanting to try and test as it gets down there. That's the altcoin market, not including Ethereum. This is with Ethereum. And it looks a lot like Bitcoin right now. This is all on the daily that we're looking at here. And then of course, let's take a look at the Dow Jones. Yesterday we were talking about um, the last time the Fed actually raised rates and uh, wanted to start reducing the balance sheet. We had a 20% decline in the markets and not, year, not yet, not there yet on the Dow Jones. 20% uh, would put it down. I think we talked about it yesterday's video. 20% puts it down at around 29,000, somewhere in that range, 29.5 ish. So still, you know, a little bit of downside to go there. The NASDAQ is a little bit closer from all time highs down right now, 21% in bear market territory. So uh, the NASDAQ has pretty much declined about, I think it was my, maybe it was about 30% last time in 2018. So 13% on the S&P, and that's where the Fed raised rates last time, and the S&P dropped. Yeah, it was 20%, so the S&P has a little bit further to go. The NASDAQ dropped back during that time frame, 
We looked at this the other day, 23, 24%. So maybe a little bit more downside to go in the NASDAQ potentially, if it follows suit with what happened the last time that markets had a big sell-off. And again, and we still have um, the close to go. We're about an hour and a half away from close right now. Markets are at about their lows, 2.68% on the NASDAQ, 1.8% on the S&P 1.5 on the Dow. Dow had been down as much as 600, so it did come back a little bit. And again, it's all about the close, the momentum in the close. This could all get bought up by the time we get to the close. You never know. Or it could continue to drop even more. And big tech earnings this week, everybody's watching earnings. And we have a lot of big tech companies, Google, Microsoft, Apple, all reporting after the bell. So we'll just have to see what that looks like. And if you have good earnings, Markets could rebound and uh, we could be looking for a green day tomorrow across the board. And uh, if earnings are not looking good, then you could see some more potential downside as we continue to pair back going into um, the Fed meeting uh, next month in May. And that's what markets are doing. Markets are pricing in, obviously, risk with the war, uh, the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, um, reducing the balance sheet and inflation. Inflation is a big, big problem. Rent, housing, food, everything is really tapping the consumer and their disposable income. A lot of areas rents have gone up 30% or more. Some areas it's doubled. So that really takes away the consumer's ability to spend. We see credit card balances rising and a lot of people are re-entering the workforce that had retired or left the workforce just because inflation, uh, it's, it's a real um, dent in purchasing power of the consumer. And this is a consumer driven economy, globally connected. And we're facing uh, a lot more inflationary um, issues because of the China situation, lockdowns there, and the war in Ukraine with energy prices, food shortages, and things like that um, due to uh, the farming that in agriculture in Ukraine that uh, is not going to be at full capacity this year. So, a lot of things that the market's trying to anticipate price in, it can't price in everything because all it can do is assume uh, what's coming, but it hasn't priced in the actual effects yet. And that'll be the next leg down once it digests what's going on here. So more downside and the market's gonna test the resolve of the Fed. So that's the other thing that's going on right now. Market is unwinding, deleveraging, repricing and testing the Fed's resolve. Once we get down below 20% on all of the indices, uh, but then that's going to be the real test of the Fed's resolve. And, you know, the thing to remember is this is a risk, uh, a risk off environment. It's all about managing risk, hedging the downside. And um, the inflation is the biggest issue out there that the Fed has to tackle. They cannot back down on inflation. Um, at this point in 2018, when they were raising rates, and wanting to reduce the balance sheet, uh, inflation was only 1.8% the way they measured it. Right now they're saying inflation's 8% or whatever it is the way they measure it. We all know that inflation is probably 20% real inflation at the consumer level when you factor everything in that's gone up, all of the costs. Some of that will subside once we get through a lot of these things, but a lot of it is, um, is here and is gonna be static and is gonna stick around. So lots of uncertainty out there. This is the market we're in. Again, you don't wanna fight the trend. You don't wanna fight the Fed. You wanna go with it, work with it and anticipate what's happening. And right now, this is not a bull market. We're not in the same conditions we were prior to the end of the year. Uh, this is a new market, new situation, new conditions that you have to be aware of and be careful with. And that's not to say there won't be opportunities when the markets bounce and things like that. It's just to say that this is a risk management market. You have to manage risk or you just you know take a step back, sit on the sidelines and wait for things to settle out and wait for the Fed to reverse course if they do, because that's the only thing that's gonna change market conditions is the Fed reversing course. Without the Fed reversing course, in other words, not reducing the balance sheet, starting to purchase again, not raising interest rates, dropping them again, uh, you're not gonna see markets reverse. Until we get that, uh, that's the only thing that's gonna reverse uh, the momentum of the markets and the trend of the markets right now. So uh, be careful out there. It's all about risk management. And I will see you on the next video.